picture this scene. You're setting up for a gig, you've got your mixer with you, you've got your guitar effects, your vocal effects, and you think to yourself, oh, I wanna live stream this as well. Plus I wanna record it in a really high quality. That could possibly mean more equipment, more cables, more setup time, and more faff. So for the next gig, you start Googling around and you look at things like podcasting mixers, separate recorders, live streaming equipment. You suddenly go down the rabbit hole of what gamers use, but actually what you wanna do is plug in, hit record, hit live stream, and play your gig the way you normally would. Now, as of recording this, there are loads of mixers that have come out, but no mixer has been really designed for musicians, with effects, a way to record every track, and also double up as an audio interface for your DAW. That is, until now. Forget every other mixer that's out there, this is what you need. This is the Boss Gigcaster 8. That's right, Boss. Boss have made a USB mixer, but it's so much more than that. Inside this little bad boy is the effects from the GT range and also the effects from the VE range. So that's guitar effects and vocal effects from Boss inside this mixer. But it doesn't stop there. It has four combi jacks and an OGS in at the bottom. It has four headphone outputs, four independent headphone controls. You can see there's actually more than four faders, and that's because we've got a way to connect your phone, Bluetooth, USB input, and these eight pads that can actually, by default, generate sounds, therefore it has its own fader, or you can reprogram these, so you could actually tell it to turn on effects, or if you're live streaming, you can even tell it to change the camera in things like OBS with MIDI control. And as soon as you go into one of the channels, everything's touchscreen. So you've got complete control over every single channel. And for the guitarists out there, the first channel here says one slash guitar, and there's an input at the bottom, which is channel one. You can plug your guitar straight in there without having to go through the back. The other beauty of this, it comes with its own power adapter, but you can actually run it on USB power, which is what I'm doing right now. In terms of sound quality, if you know Boss from the past couple of years, the engine in here is 32-bit. You can even plug in a foot controller to control the effects. It also works as a 20-in, 14-out USB audio interface by USB Type-C, and there's even a dedicated app for the Mac and the PC as well. And the last, but by no means least, is it records to SD card at 32-bit float 48 kilohertz. By the way, that's every single track. There's loads of USB new style mixers out there in the market, but they're all geared to podcasting, which is fine, and you could still do that with this, but this is aimed at musicians who want to gig and live stream and record all at the same time. So, should we take a look? Okay. So welcome to the desk. The audio you're listening to right now is the camera microphone, and we're gonna switch over to this microphone now, let me take you through a quick whirlwind of what this does. So as you can see, I'm in input number two, and it's bouncing up and down here on this touchscreen. The four inputs are combi jacks on the back, but input number one is also mirrored at the front just here, where this little guitar sign is. Plug in a guitar or bass, acoustic or electric, and you'll get access to the flagship GT amps and effects. Now you can do that on any of the inputs technically, but it's a nice little touch to have one at the front. As you can see, I'm actually recording right now, so I've got an SD card in the back, and I hit record just before I hit record on the camera, so we've actually got the timestamp at the top there, and that's gonna fleet around as I edit this video. To the on switch here, we've got the record, and above that is mark. So if I want to mark a chapter, I can click it, and then I can review each chapter in turn. We'll get to the touch screen in a minute, but we've got the four headphone jacks. Again, headphone number one is actually at the front, and then headphone outputs two, three, and four, on the back. So you'll see here this says one, two, three, four. Then you've got USB, then you've got a phone symbol, Bluetooth, the pads, and this is the master. Now the pads come preloaded with sounds and there's different banks of sounds as well. But you can change that by plugging it into a computer and loading them in via the software. But just to show you, we can actually pull this up. Now some of them, when you press them, they play and they just play as a one shot, or some of them you have to hold down like that, and then it will actually play as well. Now you can change these over for the guitar effects or the vocal effects. So if I press this button, these now change over so you can go up and down different effects for different channels, which makes it really, really easy. So right now, if I actually go onto channel two, which is what I'm on right now, we can change the effect on channel two just by going up and down and you may hear a difference obviously as I go up and down each one. This is real quick because it means if I press effects that's channel one, that's channel two, that's channel three and that's channel four and you can see that because it's blue, orange, green and purple and this is blue, orange, green and purple. But if I, if I change this and turn effects off it becomes the audio pads again. Now when you go into every single channel you can change what it does. So let's go into channel one. You can see here it's, we've got input, EQ, effects, 
in general. So first of all, the input. Now, this one is set to the guitar, but you can have it as microphone or you can stereo one and two together. You can even have it as headset or just off. So with the headset option, if you've got a set of headphones that have got a headset, you can plug that in there, maybe for gaming or for a podcast. INT mic is these two mics here, the stereo mics. Underneath is EQ. So we've got different EQs and you can actually scroll through and just get to the EQ for every single channel. Then you've got effects. So there's guitar effects, I said, from the GT. There's vocal effects from the VE range. So we've got guitar patches. Now it's not switched on at the moment. I can switch that patch on if I want to. And then if you go into it, you've either got user patches. So we've got up to 200 different user patches. And then you've got the presets that come from the GT range. We've got everything from basses. You've got echoes, you've got delays. You've even got synth noises. You've got acoustic modeling. And there's a 100 guitar and bass effects to choose from. Now, even though you've picked a guitar input, what can happen is you can go to effects, you can tap here and you can say, well, actually, I want to put a singing effect on the guitar or want a talk effect or want a console effect. You've got up to 30 different singing effects with up to 200 user patches for singing. And then there's 30 presets for just talking or voice. And then again, 200 user presets. Finally, you've got the console. So what you can do is you can actually change it how you want and add things and really, really dial in the sound that you want. Now, why are there so many different user presets? Well, imagine just skipping to the next one. It could be one per song for each channel, and that's really powerful. Remember, you can change these presets by pressing these buttons with the effects, or you can use it through external foot switches or MIDI through USB. So if you're on OBS, for example, and you change something, it can instantly change here without you pressing a thing. The really nice part is actually all the extra bits that you don't really think of. Things like, how do I get my phone in there? So there is a dedicated phone jack at the bottom and then you've got that as a dedicated fader right here and again every single channel even though you've got four audio channels you've got the usb the phone and the bluetooth they've all got the same kind of inputs but with slight variations for example if you go to the phone you've actually got plug-in power as opposed to things like 48 volt phantom power which we've got on here the usb is just straight usb in and then the bluetooth you can actually then pair and i've actually got it paired to my phone right now and you can control the gain of it here. So imagine you're doing two 45 minute sets live and you just want to play some music in the background. We can actually use that straight away. The touchscreen's default is this mixer window, which is fantastic with zero dB at the top, but actually the gain level is plus 70 dB, which is a fantastic range. And this is the advantage of 32 bit float. At the very, very top, you can see, as I said before, we're actually recording right now, so you can hear the audio coming through. But on the left-hand side, we've got a tuner. You've got the time and the date, which is stamped. And also on the right-hand side, we've got the SD card, and then obviously how many hours or minutes you've got left remaining, and playback. And then you've got the main menu here. So let me give you a scenario. Right now, as I'm doing this right now, I'm talking to you. I've got the mic going in on channel two. We might use the pads and have some sounds played, maybe a jingle. And I'm going to be doing a live stream. Alternatively, if you're actually doing something actually live and you're gigging live, then of course you can plug everything into the back. We've got four physical inputs and we've got four inputs for the pads, the Bluetooth, the mobile phone and the USB. At the bottom here, we've got muting and soloing and that's soloing for headphones. And of course, we've got the mix for four headphones so you can change that as you see fit so let me show you a couple of vocal effects both for talking and for singing so let's just switch this on so this is a light enhance as you can hear right now let's go, go to, to a, a double, double effect, effect. oh that's, that's in my, my headphones, headphones. That's, that's really weird, weird. Um, um let's, let's go to this one which is bright comp we've got one there which is bottom so it's really deep hello 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 this is a radio effect and you could have this on any channel no problem at all and we can turn it on or off so what we can do is, instead of me actually touching the screen and scrolling through, what you can actually do is you can press effects on here. This is on channel two. So we can actually very quickly go through all the different effects. And you can change it how you want. Weird, Weird. One, one, two. two. One, two, one, two. Hello, hello, hello. Mm. One, two. Hello, hello. Oh, boom, 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 boom. One, two, this is you. Um, yeah, so this is straight out of the 70s. Hi. And then we've got megaphone, there we go. And then you've got, uh, that's our 30 for singing. I can go through these really quickly. There we go. So let's go for bright enhance. How's that? How's that sound? Does that sound okay? And then we can go in here and we can change what this is. We'll obviously switch it on as opposed to off. And then we can change these. We can go into each one of these and turn them on and off individually. So we've got these on. Let's turn that Let's one turn on that as well. One as well. What? 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 
and you can go into it and you can actually change what it is. You could say, well, I need this in user number 10 because I'm going to put this on my song. That's the 10th song in your set list. And then you've got it right there. So that was the talking ones. Let's go over to the singing ones. Always have to check the uh, beatboxing one out. Hello, hello. You can pick what key it's in, or the key can actually come from somewhere else. Okay, so where this gets really interesting is when you grab a guitar. So I've plugged it in at the bottom here. It's on channel one. This is channel one here. So let's, let's bring that in. Now I haven't tuned the guitar yet, so I'm gonna use the tuner right now. I can tell it it's on channel one. I can tell it to mute channel one as well, but I haven't, so. Nice graphical representation of where you need to be. And there we go, nice and simple. And a nice thing with any of the inputs is it shows you like an optimal peak. No problem. And of course our main out is here. So if you're going out to a PA or you're going out to the USB, it comes out of here. And if I give this a click, it goes straight to output. Let's click channel one, which is also on the back if you want it to be another vocal or you wanted to plug things in via the back as opposed to plugging it in at the front. So you could plug in a stereo keyboard and you could change that to say, instead of being channel one, it could be channel one and two. And then the this one will actually go to sleep and it's just this one that you're controlling. And we've got our own EQ for it. So we could turn that on. But then we've also got the effects. Now a lot of these are for electric guitar, but some do suit acoustic guitar as well. What's really nice as well is the mix that actually shows you the output post. You can change that, but it's really nice to see that it's actually louder than my voice right now, so we could turn it down a bit. And if we have the effects button tapped on, so we can do this right now. If at the moment, because that's off and it's not blue, these are the actual sounds from the pads. But if I turn that on, I can go through the individual sounds for each one. So I've got the effects for this one, the effects for this one, which is channel two, without looking at the touch screen. Of course, I can go into that and we can have a look at it. acoustic simulate here but obviously I think that's meant to be if you're plugging in an electric guitar <laughs> guitarist but there are some sounds there for you now we're back on the road microphone on the camera because I want to talk about the recording so we're not recording at the moment so if we just tap this button it will start recording 
and there's the recording. So now you should be able to hear that coming through because we're recording this session. So we don't need to put it into like a digital audio workstation, but I can. However, if I'm at a live gig, I can just hit record, start playing a song. And when you get to the end of that song, we can hit this button and this is the mark button. So what that's done is just put a little marker on the recording and then you can carry on with your next song. If I actually press this once, it pauses the recording and then you can then pause it maybe while you're doing a live set or you're changing your guitar over or you're changing the effects and you can hit record again and now we're recording again. So we can actually then carry on with our next song. If we hold this down, it'll stop. And you can see the time goes away and that's it, the recording's done. If we go into the SD card, which is just here, so you can see right now, I'm just recording a stereo recording. So it's just the stereo feed out that you'd get from the PA, but you can change it to actually record in different ways. So at the moment, it's got 91 hours left on a 128 gig card. So if I was to do it where we're doing direct, it's only got 10 hours. Uh, if I was to record it with a pre-fade or post-fade, it's basically about 10 hours worth of recording on a 128 gig card, which is insane. If we go to playback, it shows you the last file. So this was the last file we just recorded. And you can see there's a tiny little marker there. If you wanna see all the files, just tap the little file and it shows you all the files that you've recorded. If you hit play, it's gonna play it back and you can hear it through the headphones if you want to. So I've got the headphones here, so. I press play to stop and if it just go to next it's going to jump to that tiny little flag there which is the next mark point this is really handy certainly if you're doing like a 45 minute set or an hour set or two hour set and you want to mark each song as opposed to just looking at the waveform you can just skip to the next marker now the other option you can see here is format and backup if you don't want to take the sd card out you can plug the usb into the computer hit backup and then what it'll do is it'll actually take the waveforms straight into the computer really nice and simple just plug it in the last part i want to show you you is actually the app that you can download for PC and Mac. And I have the actual Gigcaster recording right now, as well as it being on the app. So we want to show you this. So it shows you all the different mixers and then you've got the pads so we can actually see what the pads are doing so if we click on a pad it tells you what wav it is you can change it here and it'll upload it to the gig caster you've got foot controls and what you're going to do with the foot controls and also the setup as well and these lovely dials really really nice and easy to sort out so i can actually say well let's have a look at the lcd brightness let's bring it down you can see it's actually going down here as i control it and this is still recording the audio right now and it's completely in control it's absolutely fine and then we've got the mixer we've got the effects and all the effects that are there so you can obviously then go into them and start playing with them so we can have a look at the eq we can have a look at the effects here so you could completely customize how this is what i really like is this bit which is the library so you can have a live set and you can drag them in and then have them in the order that you want to you've got editor and you've got librarian for each one for basically guitar sing and talk so you can actually put them in the order you want and then you've got it ready Ready for your set then you've also got the tuner as well and you've actually got the tuner here you notice it just changed straight over but you can see it on the computer so maybe if you've got a computer on stage and this is maybe off to one side that's really really handy and you can actually use it right there and then you've got the full menu whether you want to back stuff up what the time is and the owner's manual everything's right there what's really cool is obviously being able to change things over for things like each individual input and then we can change the EQ we can add the effects what it's going to be and then if I wanted to I can obviously control it either here on the computer or can control it actually on the gig caster itself this is incredibly handy if you're doing things like live streaming you want to make sure you're getting the right audio going into the computer or you want to use this for your daw where it is a 20 in 14 out audio interface in itself which is 32 bit float and you can make sure the right channels from the inputs are going into the right channels of your door so what do you think i've said this before certainly for musicians who are creating content if you've got excellent video but crap audio people aren't going to listen to it they're going to leave whereas you've got okay video but excellent audio they'll stay and listen to it and that's what's really important i personally have been looking for a way to up my game with my live streams for bringing external sounds in and i was genuinely looking at other manufacturers but there was always something missing i don't have the gt core 1000 and i'd need to find vocal effects on my computer if it was live streaming but even in a live environment this thing can just handle it all now the downside for bigger bands is it has four combi jacks now you can group things in but for solos duos and even trios 
this actually will work for you. It depends on how many inputs you need. And remember, you've got the OGS in as well, so you could double that up if you've got like a stereo keyboard as opposed to a phone. Now, yes, the price tag is on the higher side for any kind of normal mixer, but look at what this thing can do compared to a normal mixer. You can mix, you can sing with vocal effects, you can play with guitar effects, you can record, you can use it as a DAW, you can live stream, you can monitor everything through headphones, and it's all in one box as the ultimate music mixing workstation and at an audio quality that is really really high so this actually covers quite a lot of different genres yes you've got podcasters you've got live streamers but I'm always thinking from a live gig environment and it means I can get rid of a couple of different things and the output of this can go to my phone and I can live stream and get really good quality audio but at the same time let's say you do a gig and it's just the best gig you've ever had and then you pull the audio down from a normal live stream and the audio sucks it's been compressed it's got frames missing the quality went halfway through the gig you got a bad signal this is recording at the same time you've even got the mark button to mark it through so after every song you can just press the mark button and then you can go through it later on and pull that audio from the SD card and it's the highest quality you've got now I'd like to thank boss for actually sending this out to me and I'm gonna make a couple more videos about this in certain scenarios so what I want from you is comments I want you to ask me loads of questions about this and I'm gonna gather those questions up and we'll make videos about it together that way you get the answer you want and I can really show you how this can actually work in your favor now, boss are known for their amps and for their loopers and now with an awesome mixer but the other product they brought out earlier this year of 2023 is this this is the boss fs1 wl it's a bluetooth paddle that can do multiple things and if you want to see the videos i've made about that they're right here